Planet. I'm the field secretary of the International Tribunal in the Crimes of Church and State. I'm here in New York City on February 7th with several very important announcements. This last week, the United Nations released a toothless and unenforceable statement on the rape and torture of children by the Roman Catholic Church. It's done nothing to stop that enormous crime and has allowed it to continue. And so now it's up to the people of the world through their own common law courts to take direct action to stop the crimes of the Vatican. If the United Nations was serious about combating the organized rape and trafficking of children that's allowed and encouraged to do so by Catholic canon law, it would treat the Vatican as the criminal organization that it is by revoking the diplomatic status of the Vatican at the UN and barring this representation on UN committees. It would encourage all nations to nullify their tax exemptions to the Catholic Church and revoke the financial concordats that unlawfully funnel billions of dollars of taxpayers' money into the Vatican Bank. And it would declare the Vatican Incorporated to be a transnational criminal organization under the UN Convention by that name. And it would bring civil court action to jail all known child raping priests and the high church officials who protect them. But the truth is the United Nations has done none of that. And it thereby has enabled the church to continue its reign of terror against the innocent children all over the world, not tens of thousands as they name, but millions upon millions of victims of the Catholic Church, including children not yet born. The United Nations' refusal to take action against the crimes of the Catholic Church is unexplainable and unconscionable, especially in the light last Monday of a revelation that the criminal conspiracy to aid child trafficking has actually been broadened by the Vatican and was during the year 2010 through the collusion of Queen Elizabeth and the Church of England. And that conspiracy actually implicates the present Pope Francis as well. Last Monday, our organization revealed that on September 16, 2010, the Vatican and the Crown of England, through their chief officers, entered into a formal criminal conspiracy to traffic children and aid and abet child rapists all over the world. That conspiracy occurred between Queen Elizabeth and former Pope Benedict, Joseph Ratzinger, at Holyrood Castle in Edinburgh, where as a condition of the merger of the Church of England and the Church of Rome, the Queen agreed to place all Anglicans under this notorious Catholic canon law known as Crimen Solicitanus. That law, which is still on the books, requires that all child rape be covered up by priests, therefore obstructing justice and subverting the sovereign laws of countries all over the world when it has to do with the protection of children, including the United States and Canada. The present Pope Francis, Jorge Bergoglio, has not only concealed this conspiracy, but recently has been named by a former insider in the Argentine government as actually having organized the trafficking of children in Argentina during the dirty war in the 1970s. So last Tuesday, on the basis of these facts, our international tribunal under crimes of church and state pe petitioned the common law court of justice in Brussels to begin formal proceedings against Jorge Bergoglio, Pope Francis, to charge him with aiding and abetting human trafficking, inciting treason and crime, and subverting the law of nations through his policies and practices in the church. Now the opening hearings of that case against Jorge Bergoglio will begin no later than Monday, March 31st, 2014, after which a pub public summons will be issued against Pope Francis. The International Common Law Court has also been asked to name as defendants in this case the corporations of the City of London and the Crown of England, as well as the Vatican and the Jesuit Order. These corporations and their officers will be named as accessories to an ongoing crime against the children of the world enunciated in these policies. Well, now let me take a moment to discuss the second part of my announcement today and why I'm saying this in front of the Canadian Consulate. Because this last week, I was informed by a British Member of Parliament in London that the Crown of England's Privy Council office in London is considering issuing an order to the Canadian Governor General and Prime Minister's office to have me arrested and prosecuted for what they call sedition. In other words, I may be charged with treason by the British monarchy under the same repressive laws that imprison some of America's own founding fathers and many of her patriots. And I'm not alone in being targeted in this way for three of my close associates in England and Canada were recently arrested and held without charges for having spoken out about the crimes committed against our children every day by the Crown of England, the Vatican, and the courts sanctioned by these powers. 
In fact, it's Queen Elizabeth who has inflicted treason on her own people. By violating English law, she swore to uphold and protect. By acting at the behest of a foreign power and placing England under the jurisdiction of that power, the Church of Rome and its child-killing policies that subvert our laws. She did that on September 16, 2010, with the connivance of Pope Benedict. And so under British law, she and all her heirs must immediately abdicate or be removed by Parliament. Well, it's no accident that my possible arrest was ordered by the Crown the very same week that we publicly revealed the Holyrood Agreement that implicates her with the Vatican. But no amount of threats can stop us from bringing out the truth. No amount of threat of imprisonment will stop the cries of these children all over the world. Because it's not the simple individual figureheads we're naming, but entire institutions responsible for these crimes. In truth, the Crown of England and the Vatican have lost their moral and their legal authority. Their writs do not operate anymore. And so I appeal to all Americans here to help us in our struggle to stop our children and our liberties being subverted. So let me announce that in the event of my arrest or my detaining or harassment by the forces of the Crown of England or the Government of Canada, my lawyer has instructions to immediately apply in America to allow me to seek political asylum in this country so that I can continue to carry on this work to indict the criminals in church and state who are destroying our children and our future. I'm positive that the people of the world will rally around us at this time to stop these crimes and to allow justice to prevail. Thank you.